guys, welcome back to CJ's Keto Kitchen. Tonight we are going to be making a yummy Italian dish and we are going to be making a keto calzone. So come along with me and let's get started. So a calzone is a traditional Italian a dish and it actually stems from a, a Latin word meaning stocking or purse and that's basically what this is. It's basically like a stuffed pizza. So we are going to be using a fathead dough for this step and doing a few things to make it into the calzone shape. Now fathead dough is a very traditional keto food. Um, it's a, an original recipe by a man named Tom Naughton, and it uses very simple ingredients. It can be a bit intimidating at times, but it will definitely increase the amount of foods that you can make on this lifestyle if you become familiar with fathead dough. So hopefully the tips that I have in this recipe will help. So come along with me and let's get started making a keto calzone. I am just sauteing a little bit of mushroom and onion here and just a small amount of butter. Um, this is what we are going to be placing in our calzone along with our meats and our cheeses. But as with any style of pizza, you can use any ingredients that you enjoy in your pizza in a calzone. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to preheat our oven for when we are done preparing our calzone dough and we go ahead and bake it. It's going to be a fairly high temperature. We are going to do 425. We're going to begin with a traditional fathead pizza dough in order to make our calzone. So what we need to do first is we need to take our cream cheese and I have pre-softened mine a little bit. Uh, you don't have to do this step, but I find that it helps with incorporation. So this is two tablespoons of cream cheese, and I'm using the Philadelphia brand. And to this, we need to add mozzarella cheese, and we need one and a half cups. And I'm using a half a cup here to measure. I'm going to put three of them in. I'm going to start microwaving for one minute. We want to get our cheeses, our cream cheese and our mozzarella cheese starting to melt. So it's going into the microwave at first for one minute. We can see that it is starting to melt, but it's definitely not fully melted. So I'm going to give that a little bit of a stir and put it in for another minute. So now it's where we want it to be, nice and stringy and hot. So now we are going to add three quarters of a cup of almond flour, stirring very well. Now if your dough cools down, you can always pop it back in the microwave. Before you add your egg is ideal because after you add your egg, it can be uh, you can run into the risk of cooking your egg. So we got our dough incorporated here. So now I'm going to add one egg. And remember that your dough is hot. And just do your best to incorporate your egg. It's going to seem like it's resisting it. Just keep working it. Fathead dough can seem intimidating at first, but really it is quite easy to work with once you get used to it. I'm going to take my clean hands and just continue to work the dough, being conscious that it is warm.
just working the egg into that dough. Okay, now I'm going to set aside my dough and just let it rest for a minute. Next, we are going to prepare our dough surface. This step, you are going to need parchment paper. I buy mine at the dollar store. Sometimes it can be cost um, prohibitive, a little expensive at the grocery store, so I definitely recommend the dollar store. You're going to need two sheets about the same size. about that size. So I'm going to season my dough with a little bit of um, Italian seasoning. I'm also going to put a little bit of garlic powder. And I'm also going to add a little bit of Johnny's garlic spread. And I'm going to incorporate those seasonings into the dough with my hand. And that's just going to flavor our dough a little bit. I'm going to be adding some more to the interior and the exterior before cooking. Okay, so we have our dough and it is still a bit sticky. Fat head dough is always sticky. But I am going to show you how you can offset some of that stickiness. So. What we want to do with our dough in the middle of our parchment paper, we are going to place the other piece of parchment paper over it. I'm going to be using a rolling pin and I'm going to roll this out trying to get it larger. And the parchment paper just helps prevent with the sticking. Okay, so carefully start peeling back your parchment paper. You are going to lose just a tiny bit of dough, but it's not, it's not too major. And you can always slightly pull it with your fingers. Here's the tip for working for fat head dough. Damp fingers. I have a bowl of clear water here, and I'm just going to wet my fingers. And that really assists in working with fat head dough. So just have your little dish of water because it's going to help you with your dough. Okay. So I got some on the counter, of course I did. So I'm just going to smooth everything back together. Anytime you see cracking or splitting, just remember to take your little damp dish and just work with it. Just play with it. It's pretty, pretty flexible at this point. Okay, so I have my smoothed circle of dough here. And just keep working with your dough and your damp hands to get it into the basic shape that you would like. Mine is kind of a squared off oval. We are going to begin filling half of our calzone with our toppings, but I'm going to place this onto my cookie sheet. And I just have my sheet pan here. So I'm going to transfer this to the sheet pan as carefully as I can. And now I'm going to fill just this half with my toppings. So I'm going to spread a little bit of pizza sauce 
try and look for as low carb of a pizza sauce as you can find. I found that the Walmart version is quite low carb. And I'm not going to be putting a great deal of sauce on this. Um, there is controversy in the calzone world, of course, whether a calzone has sauce in it or not in traditional Italian. But you do whatever you would like to do. Most people consider a sauceless calzone to be a stromboli. And I'm only putting a small amount in here. You can always have some on the side for dipping after you have cooked your calzone. Mm -hmm. So I have got my sauce down. I'm going to lay down some pepperoni. As with any sort of pizza, you can do any toppings that you and your family prefer. I have really large slices of pepperoni here, but just regular pepperoni would work as well. Traditionally, pepperoni is used, also salami, which is the next ingredient I'm going to be putting in. And you can put as little or as much as you would like. Remember that we are going to need to close this. So I'm also going to add some salami. Now I'm adding the sauteed mushrooms and onions that we did earlier. And I'm just going to spread those around evenly. I'm going to add some additional seasoning at this point just to season the inside of our calzone well. A little bit more of the Italian seasoning. We want this to be very savory and flavorful. I'm then going to add just a, a bit more cheese to the inside. And your level of cheese is based completely on personal preference. I am using probably about a half a cup to three quarters here of mozzarella and you could use different cheeses if you preferred. So the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to fold our parchment paper this way to cover our calzone, like so. I'm going to scoot this down a bit. <clears throat> So we are going to start slowly pulling this away with our parchment paper. Remembering that if we see the dough sticking, we can always use our dampened hands here in our bowl of water to take it off. But it's coming away from the parchment paper quite nicely. So then we put our parchment next to it because we are going to be baking it on this parchment. So the next thing that we do, we have our nice beautiful shell here. We are going to curl it around so that our toppings stay within our calzone. Okay, so just start curling it over as best as you can. Remember this is going to be a very rustic looking calzone. Most calzones are. And you can wet your hands. If you don't want to do, try and do a curve over. You can just, you know, simply use a fork and press it almost like a big um, turnover. And you're just kind of sealing it is what you're doing. So that our toppings stay in while we're cooking it. all of our yummy goodness to escape while it's in the oven. Okay. We want to cut a couple of slices in this to vent and let all of our toppings cook on the inside without bursting out so much on the edges. So I'm just going to cut a couple of slices in the dough with a knife. And you can do it in any kind of pattern. Okay. 
Okay, so there we have our little slices. The next thing that I'm going to do before I put it in the oven is I'm going to brush it with a little bit of olive oil and season the top. So I just have a silicone pastry brush here and I have just poured a little bit of extra virgin olive oil into a dish and I'm just going to brush it with some olive oil. You could use butter if you wanted, but of course olive oil is very traditional in Italian cooking. And this is just going to give it a nice golden brownness when it bakes in the oven. I'm just trying to get all the edges. Okay, so we have our olive oil on. And then once again, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of seasoning on the top so the outside of our dough is also nicely seasoned. I'm gonna do a little bit of garlic, a little bit of Italian seasoning, and just a little bit more of our Johnny's garlic spread. You could use some Parmesan cheese or Pecorino Romano if you wanted to. Okay, so there we have our oil and seasoned calzone. Now we are going to put this into our 425 degree preheated oven, just on our sheet with our parchment paper. And I'm going to cook this between 22 and 25 minutes. I'm going to start at the 22 minute mark and see how it looks on the top when it has been in there for 22 minutes. So into the oven we go. Zone should be ready to come out of the oven. Mine did indeed take 22 minutes, but of course every oven temperature will vary. So just keep an eye on it. And there's what she looks like cooked. Nice and golden brown on the top. And our fillings did not escape, which is awesome. So I'm going to let this cool for a few minutes on the cookie sheet. And then I'm going to cut it into slices and I will serve CJ a piece and he can tell us his thoughts. Hi CJ. Hi. We are having keto calzone tonight. Hmm. Like pizza advanced. Yeah. And I gave you some dipping sauce if you want to dip it. That's okay. just just pizza sauce. Yeah. Hmm. It's good. Very flavorful. Seems like fathead dough doesn't. It seems like fathead dough doesn't puff up like other normal traditional dough. Right. There's no leavening in it. Yeah. So I think people need to just be aware of of it but I think this is a good option for people I like the sauce component of course people don't have to do it no it's really good baby good I think it's better than the first one you made <laughs> I think it all depends on the ingredients you a couple of weeks ago yeah, yeah well we were yeah we were you were just messing around with yeah it. well and, it, and what I made in there was a lot saucier because I started mm -hmm. with like leftover spaghetti sauce so this so is no, the this is good. I did notice it seemed like the cheese always kind of melts together it melts kind of away because yeah. it's a cheese base because it's a cheese based yeah. product <laughs> so it kind of melts in with the rest of it I guess you could melt some additional cheese on top if you wanted to yeah no I think it's really flavorful good that's a flavor so good job, baby. I think people will like it. It's a nice option and a nice use of fathead dough. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us again tonight, you guys. We hope that you enjoy the calzone. I know that we are going to. 
We hope that you will consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you can come back and make more delicious ketogenic foods with us. I try and do four recipes a month, two sweet and two savory, and we upload our new recipes on Sundays. On Wednesdays, we also have a keto conversation style discussion, and that is where we talk about different things on the ketogenic lifestyle. Sometimes we have keto food unboxings. Sometimes we discuss foods that we eat on this lifestyle. We are also on social media. If you would like to join us there, we are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. And we release teaser photos about foods that we are currently enjoying, foods we have made in the past, and also upcoming foods for our latest recipes. If you need any information on this recipe, the ingredients, the macros, tips that we found while preparing this recipe, and also some follow-up taste test information from CJ, that can always be found on our blog, and that is cjsketokitchen.com. So we hope that you will come back and see us again next time, and until that time, be well.